Hello, I'm Mark Tucker. Hey there, I'm Alan Furstenberg, and we are Two Voice Devs. Two Voice Devs, hey, my friend. My friend, Mark. Good to see you. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to see you, too. It's been a long week, man. Oh, tell me about it. It's definitely been one of those weeks. <laughs> you know, uh, and, and it's weird because I didn't, you know, February went even faster than I feel like it should have. I mean, I know it's yeah. a short month, but it really flew by. Yeah, I thought I had at least uh, another three or four days, and all of a sudden it was March 1st, and I was like, oh? Huh? Yeah. It was definitely one of those months. Yeah, a busy week for me. Got a lot of new things I'm checking out, and just, I feel like my brain's full. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you there. I hear you there. But, you know, I noticed uh, recently that another Jovo plugin of yours has been uh, approved you know, merged in, you know, whatever the right term is for it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is uh, something I, I actually started back a while ago. Um, actually, the end of last year, I, I started working on this plugin um, for analytics. The backstory is that uh, I, I had been doing in some of my projects, uh, Google Analytics um, <laughs> for, for keeping track of you know, intense and you know, in some ways it was it, it was a it was a hack to to kind of fit in the voice paradigm into the web analytics framework, which is uh, Google Analytics. And uh, it, it was as, a hack, and it was a hack in more than one way. I mean, they also yeah. really really made it difficult to record events that looked well, even vaguely like web events. Yeah. So. Um, you know, we kind of made it work, and that was back with was it uh, Universal Analytics, um, and yeah. then they they changed. Um, you know, they're kind of sunsetting that, and they came out with Google Analytics four, and they locked lots of things down. We we had a number of different conversations, you and me, just kind of like, well, where do I go from here? Um, and one of the things that you suggested that I take a look at was Google's Big Query. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, so I did, and I started on the, on the project, um, kind of the end of last year, just on my own, used it for some things and then, um, went ahead and made it into a formal plugin and, um, just kind of went through, it took a, a while to go through the, the process this time, but, um, what, what do, can you tell us about, uh, Google BigQuery? Um, we'll just kind of start from there. It's, you know, very high level and, uh. So BigQuery is what Google refers to as one of their, their data warehouse products. Um, and it's it's really kind of meant as a as a place where most of the time you're just dumping data. You're you're just continuously putting data into it. And and one of the things that's it's well tuned for is what they refer to as streaming data into it. So you can constantly be collecting data. And then issuing queries against it or analyzing the data. They've got some machine learning capabilities into it. Um, you can query the data using SQL, using other common looking tools. Um, and there are really good ways to get the data out of BigQuery into other tools as well. So it's, it's a really, really good solution for just storing stuff, you know, and it's it's kind of one of the native one of the very native uh, capabilities that that Google has themselves. They use BigQuery natively for all of their logging, for all of their uh, modern analytics stuff. Um, you know, it's it's probably Google Analytics four is probably built on top of BigQuery itself, just a a friendly looking layer on top of it. Um, so it's very much ideally suited for analytics type work what's one of the things they advertise it for actually yeah. yeah so i started looking into it and one of the things that kind of one of the directions that google was going to go ahead and go with google analytics for and was already in and in, in firebase analytics was going more of this event approach mm -hmm. where everything's an event and uh, events have properties, you know, depending on what event it is, it, you know, depends on which properties it has. And, 
And so I started looking at uh, at this and, and thought, you know, I think I could actually do something with this. And um, there's a number of different parts to this plugin or, or like or how to use this plugin. But the first thing you would do is you would start off in, in your Google uh, console where you would have go to uh, you know big uh, query and you have to set up a project and set up a table and you have to define a schema for that table. Hmm. Uh, which is just basically, you know, what columns are going to be in this table. And just think of it about this as like just a really wide table with lots of different columns with different data types. And uh, depending on which event you send, only some of them are going to, you know, you know, get sent. And sometimes every event's going to fill up, you know, some, some columns in other cases. So for example, I've got a, uh, an identifier for when the event happened. Um, you know, just kind of a, just a, a date time stamp of when they actually s submitted the event, like what type of event, um, uh, some different things with, uh, you know, epic time in, in seconds and in milliseconds. Um, some of that would be for sorting. Some of that could be used for diffing things. There's just a number of, of, of different columns that you have. Um, so, but the first thing you're going to do is go ahead and define what your um, scheme is going to look like. And then you get, you know, the different configuration information or the, the service count file that you need to go ahead and bring down in your project and use that because that's going to be the thing that behind the scenes connects right. um, so, connects so to, to be, Google Analytics. Yeah. Right. So to be clear, what, what, what the service account uh, does is it's it's the authentication information. Yep. It's, you know, an, an OAuth key that is necessary to, to generate the, the session key. So and so, so this... And this is how you permit, you know, access to the table to write data. You know, so this yeah, is the the security exactly. layer that's in here. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's one of the configuration things. There's a, there's a few other configuration um, things they threw in in for it. You can look at the documentation. We'll have a link um, in the notes as far as what it takes to configure it. Then you just uh, include the plugin in your Jovo project. And if that's all you want to do, you're you're good to go because um, there's a number of built-in events that are just going to, you know, get tracked for you automatically. Um, so some of the built-in events that I've got is one that uh, Jovo collects is device capabilities. What's the ID of the device? Does it support a screen? Does it support audio, um, video, or long-form audio? Um, there's an error object. So if there's something that happens inside of... Um, um, the the plugin itself is going to log an error, uh, but you can also then inside your try catches you could you you could log errors, um, so that's built in. Um, there's uh, when it captures an intent when it figures out what the intent is in the pipeline because Jovo has the, the the pipeline where it could start off with ASR that turns into you know takes speech into text, then you could do NLU which takes text into in, intents and slots. So any of those things are captured if it's a new user. Uh, when the request started, when the request ended, when the session started, when the session ended. Now, now are um, each one of these are events? So yeah, they're each a separate events. So, so if a new user triggers an intent, you're going to be recording an event that you have a new user, an event that they triggered an intent, an event with a with what device type it is. Yeah. So what what hmm. happens okay. behind the scenes is that. You know, in the typical request uh, re response cycle, it runs through the whole Jovo pipeline, the middleware, and there's certain things that happen at different points. Those things that are are uh, most interesting um, have built-in events already, and they're just going to go ahead and capture them. And behind the scenes, the plugin um, records all of those events entries, and then at the very end. Of the of the pipeline before the response comes back, then it communicates with BigQuery and it writes out seven rows or ten rows or you know whatever it, it captured during that one cycle. Um, so and it, it's pretty fast um, already with the API, uh, but I wanted to to minimize the number of API calls that happened, mm -hmm. um, and so it, it's just going to you know start collecting events and then you can go. Uh, to BigQuery and and do it, uh, you know, query what what events are happening. Um, but the easiest thing to do is there's a really good Google Sheets integration. So you just connect Google Sheets to it, and then you open up your spreadsheet, you refresh it, 
and then you can do fun things like you know charts or pivot tables or uh, you know queries that you know surface values. And so that's that, you know that's what I did for all all the different widget stuff that I've been working on is behind the scenes. Um, you know I can see um, what intents were executed. Um, I could I can see um, how many new users there there were. I could um, and then. Those are all the built-in events, and then there's custom events. You can define your own event. Um, if you're going to use a column that's not already, not already defined in your schema, you'll have to go back into the schema and add some additional columns to match those that mm -hmm. you've provided. Um, but then that's how I know, like how many times somebody has clicked the uh, the flip a coin or has done the magic eight ball widget. Every time you tap to shake the magic eight ball then I, I keep a account. So I could go in my analytics and just say, oh, there's been you know, X number of people that have used this widget, how many times they've clicked it. I can keep track of like how many times it was, uh, the widget was installed um, every day over the last you know four months um, and kind of see trends in that. Now, how much can you tie some of these events together? So for example, you know, if I can, can I say, um, you know, I have this particular intent that uh, is getting called a lot. How many times is it getting called for somebody who's got an Echo 5 versus an Echo 15? Yeah, so it currently it doesn't um, identify what type of, what specific screen resolution that is, but you could capture that um, in an event and uh, and log that. Yeah, I was trying to think of an, you know, but well, you say device yeah. capabilities. That was the first capability I could think of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so fine. How many times, you know, is is this intent being called by a device that has a screen versus a device that is a speaker only? Yeah, so that that's um, it's going to be a little bit more challenging, and this is where hopefully somebody else with more experience with BigQuery can come in and. and uh, and and guide me, but each of those is a separate um, event. Event, um, but there, but a, a number of things are shared. So, um, like the session ID, um, so like well, like the request ID. You can say, "Give me everything for this request ID," and it will tell you all of the events that happened during that, that one request. Okay. Um, or you can get the session ID, and you can say, "Give me all the events that happened during this session, or all the events that happened for this particular user." Um, so there are some things that you can do, but then you 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 would have to do some massaging and probably some subquery stuff to get. Well, to but that's okay. I mean, as the the I guess the question did boil down to: Did you have a key that was in common to all of these that so you could tie these yeah. events together? And this is useful because you know now what will happen? You know what you can do is things like you know uh, do a query for errors that come up. You know, and okay now match those errors with the intent that was executing at the time yeah. of the error match those errors with the device capability match those errors with is this a new use you know so you can say yep huh i'm getting a lot of errors if this is a new user on a speaker maybe i've done something yeah. wrong and that lets me focus in on that particular issue and that's incredibly yeah. powerful when you're trying to debug you know bizarre issues from, you know, <laughs> random trouble reports. <laughs> yeah, um, that, that, that's definitely true. That, that Trying to even connect things together to figure out. So you could like marry this with something like Sentry, where Sentry, if you instrument your code with Sentry, then whenever an error happens, you could log some information. Well, one of the things that you could log would be like the user ID and the session ID. And so then you could then take that session ID and go ahead and query BigQuery and say, you know, show me a list of all the events that happened in order for this session. And then you can start to kind of go back and forth and see what happened. Oh, they, this was the intent that they did. These were the slots that they came back. This was the, the um, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think of what else there is. Um, so intent is, is, is one, there is one, a, a, bail, a standard event called execute handler. So um, the router in Jovo takes your intent and figures out which component and which handler on that component gets called. 
well that gets logged for you automatically too so then you can kind of you can see oh this was the mm -hmm. you know, this was the intent that came in this is this is where you know the router resolved that it was going to go to uh but then it got an error or um so that's that's the the, the type of stuff you know it's just extensible so uh it's it's pretty cool i i, I was excited that it finally got done there were some uh some like feedback when I initially submitted it, um, but the Jovo team uh, recommended that I, I get back and change. And then things like built up on my plate and I couldn't really get back to it. And it just taking longer. And somebody else is like, Hey, we're really excited about this. Uh, anything we can do to help? And I'm like, yes, please. And so they did a pull request from my, my, uh, um, my, my pull request for the new feature. And we ended up getting that pr approved and, and out. So, Already feel like it has some uh, some well, buy-in from others from the beginning. Yeah. No, it's certainly great that you know you've got this community that is you know helping things along. You know, so it's not you know what is one of the great things about these kinds of communities is you know you're not relying on one person to do all the work. Yeah. Um, you have people who are sort of you know leading the effort, but there are others who can come along and help with it. And that's, that's one of the great things about these communities. Yeah. And so um, <clears throat> the, the Jovo team has been very open to having things added to the core um, Jovo, um, you know, project and, and the documentation on how to contribute is, is pretty, um, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, but you have two options. If you're going to do open source, you could you could take a look at this particular thing and say, does this seem like something that we'd want to deploy um, as part of you know Jovo and kind of maintained long term by them, or is this something that you want to create your own uh, project and release it? And um, they live side by side on the Jovo marketplace. If you were to see all the different contributions that are in the Jovo marketplace, you couldn't necessarily know immediately. Um, which ones were were built in to the the Jovo framework and which ones were third party? Um, but uh, we've got a, a growing list of of plugins there. And this, you know, this is a, a really important one. You and I have discussed many times, you know, over over the years now, the importance of logging, and you know why you want to just why you want to do analytics and why you want to make sure you're you're recording what's going on and yet still keeping user privacy um you know how how valuable this is for things like debugging and figuring out where what what path users are actually taking through your system yeah um these are all really important things so it's good to see and this is a, a an ideal way to collect that information because as you said, there's so many ways you can get it out. You know, you can issue queries in BigQuery itself. You know, you can pull it into a spreadsheet. I think you can pull it into something like Looker, which lets you do all sorts of interesting analytics on it. Um, so there's lots and lots of, of ways that you can now play with the data once it's in there. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, it's just fun to, to be able to check on things day-to-day uh, -day or week-to-week -week and see... Uh, how things are progressing um kind of at the same time i was as i was you know, evaluating different options for you know what am i going to do with analytics now i did look at uh aws uh, like kinesis firehose and their their data streaming and it in many ways it was you know it was fine and in parallel features not not the Google Sheets integration or like spreadsheet integration, um, nowhere close to that on um, on the the AWS analytics stuff. But there were just some weird things about when you change the schema refreshing, and it, that was just seemed a little more clunky. And I I was just surprised at how how much of a breeze Google um, you know BigQuery was. I I also find AWS dealing with permissions in AWS is just so much more complicated. You know, even when sometimes they'll, you know, they try to simplify that by saying, okay, we've now permitted it for you. And you go back and discover that all sorts of bizarre permissions have now been added. And you're like, <laughs> is this safe? Is this okay? I, yeah. Did I do this? 
<laughs> or, you know, there have been times and I, you know, not with not in these cases where, you know, I've set something up and suddenly now I'm getting alerts in the CloudFront console because whatever it's set up has triggered new alerts for me. I don't know, you know, but that's yeah. how I feel. Yeah. AWS just suddenly does things, yeah. whereas Google, I don't feel that way. I feel like everything fits together much more nicely. So I'm I'm glad you know the suggestion to look into it has has worked out well because I I think yeah. it's an ideal case for it. Yeah, I I, I feel like it was uh, uh, you know definitely right on your your side of things to suggest it. I I'm glad you did. I because I I wasn't it wasn't on my radar at all. I was looking at some other things and trying to figure out well what do I do and and uh, so I appreciate the you know, the the, 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 the other one and I'll mention this here just briefly because I I am enamored of it somehow is Google Cloud logging is in some way, like I said, I have a feeling it's built on top of BigQuery, um, but they don't tell people this, but it's also a lot more free form. You know, you just send it a JSON object, you know, a JSON data structure and it logs it. And later you can go query for any field in there over any time range. So there's, there's interesting things that you can do with it, but it's a little more narrow in, um, in trying to tie things together, yeah, one's one's a little bit more log based, and 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 uh, BigQuery is more event based. Yeah. So, fantastic! Congratulations on yet another plugin. Thank you. Yeah, it was it was fun and challenging in some ways, uh, but I, I always learn something new. So uh, uh, it's it's fun. You know, if people want to understand more about how to create plugins for Jovo or uh, you can you know, take definitely take a look at uh, a number of the ones that I've created and look at the, the code. There, surprisingly, very little. There's really only you know two main coding files and you can do quite a bit and you know a few hundred lines of code and and uh, things are wired together pretty good. So um, you take a look at that. you could you know ask contact me. Uh, whether it be on you know social media, um, uh, re respond, ask, ask comments in the in you know YouTube or uh, on our podcast, just whatever, however you want to get in touch, I would be happy to help you get started if that's something you're interested in. And of course, we'll talk about this more, I'm sure, another time on Two Voice Devs. Two Voice Devs. Take care, Alan. Take care, Mark. Have a great weekend. You too. Try to get some rest. Oh, thanks, you too.